I'm approaching the suburb of Runcorn. Now you may be wondering, Rob, there can't be much history in Runcorn. What are you doing there? Well, you'd be wrong. This is what I'm always banging on about. History is everywhere, it's all around us. So in this little documentary, I'm gonna show you the history of Runcorn, but not only that, I moved here in 1986 with my family. So this was my introduction to Queensland right here. So for me, it's gonna be a bit of a trip down memory lane. The first European impact on this area was this road right here. Today we know it as Bean Lee Road. But when you think about it, it doesn't actually go to Bean Lee. This road here was part of the old Logan Road. And I made a video about the old Logan Road. You can catch it earlier in my catalogue. It was put through by timber getters coming down from Brisbane, needing to get to the Logan River. The area was part of the Brisbane Agricultural Reserve proclaimed in 1861, and it covered 7,876 acres. It was later extended by 5,500 acres and became the Eight Mile Plains Agricultural Reserve, which was established in 1864. Agricultural reserves were places set aside for more intensive settlement and farming, on land that was rich and fertile, and with ready access to either roads or a river. They were intended to fast-track agricultural development. This agricultural reserve, however, was only a small one. By comparison, the Logan Agricultural Reserve was far larger. This is the corner of Beanley and Gowan Road, and this petrol station here, this United 24, if memory serves, this used to be a plant nursery, you know, landscaping supplies and gravel and retaining walls and, and plants and trees and things. I'm on Gowan Road, and to my left is what looks like a little market garden. Maybe one of the last surviving little gardens, fruit and veggies, that used to dominate this area. I'm now passing the Runcorn Tavern. I don't know when this place was opened. I know it was updated some years ago. I've only eaten here once, and that was 37 years ago. We ate here just after we moved up here from Sydney. And I remember my dad didn't like the meal very much. On YouTube? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> my partner is absolutely nuts about it. Oh, great. Oh, nice. <laughs> you learn a lot more just by putting your shoes on and getting out there and seeing the lie of the land and finding the little details. Even just here, I've only been here 20 minutes and I've already found an old fence line. Awesome. Good on you, mate. Thanks for that. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Walking along busy Gowan Road, and this was originally part of the Brisbane Agricultural Reserve, and which means this was a government road. This was a road put through to help open up the, the landscape for future development in terms of agriculture. You find that with the, a lot of the old government roads, they're very long straight roads, like Roman roads in Europe. But up ahead, the road, the road veers off round to the left, but it didn't originally do that. The road kept going straight ahead. And you can see here, there's an old, fence post just there there's another one there so here's an old property boundary line going that way along the old course of Gowan Road and I think I'll put my umbrella back up Avenue of Death there it is there's Gowan Road behind me and I'm still walking straight but now I'm walking along a footpath oh yeah big branches there's a kookaburra what's the name of this park Oh, this park and I have a history because I think it was just over that way, over there. This was the very first place I ever got swept on by a magpie. I think it was 1987 it happened. I don't remember why I was walking through there because if I'd been up at Pineland Shops, I would have just walked along Beanley Road, which is over there. You can see the cars in the distance. For some reason, I was walking through there and I got swooped on. Never happened in Sydney. I never, never ever got swooped on by a magpie in Sydney. I come up to Brisbane and it's a, it's a way of life. This here is Nathan Road and just like Gowan Road, this is also, oh there's a magpie warning. Um, swooping bird, protect your eyes, head, face, don't walk. Still walking along Nathan Road. About seven years ago... Oh no, wait, that wasn't me. 
over that side to the left, over that way, move the umbrella up, is um, Runcorn Swamp. And I remember reading many years ago that there were Aboriginal remains there, as in terms of middens. There was uh, some pretty good fishing for the local indigenous folk uh, just over there. What the status of those finds is now uh, and whether it's protected or not, I have no idea. This lovely little spot here is Balimba Creek. Well, at least it's one branch of it. It splits further north. It comes down this side on the western side and there's another part of Balimba Creek further over on the eastern side of Runcorn. What a lovely spot. I've never been here before. Heading east southeast along Beanley Road, Currabee's up ahead, and there's a new housing estate going on here. I remember walking along here in about 1988, and there was a fence along here, and there was a horse round about right here. And I patted the horse, it was very nice. And just up there was an old house. Now, this area here was part of the Eight Mile Plains Agricultural Reserve. This was actually known as Portion 18. If you look on this map, you can see Portion 18. A guy called Thomas Shaw with two partners, Griffiths and Vernon, purchased the land. Though I understand they didn't actually live on site here. They resided elsewhere, but the land was under cultivation. And then in 1915, William and Anne Arthy bought Portion 18, and they were the ones who built the first recorded house on the site and that was the one that I saw. And I think the horse that was here, he got out one day and he was running along Beanley Road. I don't know where he was going. There's a little park here just near the Arthi house. And within the park, there's this big, big tree here. I reckon that's an avocado tree. Wow. Now that's got to have been part of the Shaw and Griffith and Vernon and later Arthi property, portion 18. So this could be a final remnant of the old agriculture that was here, the fruit and vegetable farms belonging to Shaw and Arthi. How utterly charming that is to have this old tree here still bearing fruit. In 1868, Alfred Williams and family were the first settlers. They took land on the south side of the old Logan Road and were the first to clear the trees. I'm now walking along Warrigal Road. This used to be known, though not officially, as Chinaman's Road. There were many Chinese market gardens along here in the 1870s and 1880s. But Runcorn got its name from Runcorn in Cheshire in England. There was a reverend, Reverend J. McLaren, who moved here to this area from Runcorn in England. And he's the one who gave Runcorn here its name. Yeah, there was interest in developing Runcorn in 1880, five years before the railway arrived the Runcorn Estate was unveiled. And then in 1890, 10 years later, after the railway had come through, the Runcorn Station Estate was open for purchase. I'm walking into what really used to be the township of Runcorn. It was never really a town, but it was the place where most of the infrastructure was. This Master Chen Medical Center, I think used to be a timber supply yard yeah because the wall on that that building over there that's that's later that was all open and trucks would come in through here with their, their wood and lumber and just near the old timber yard is this building here i know there used to be a post office here on the site so i don't know if that's the original building it looks it looks a bit like a post office or maybe a house that was adapted into a post office, but there, there's a map. You, you can see it here. There was a, there used to be a post office right here. Runcorn train station. This was opened in 1885. This is the train station I used to come to every day to get the train to school. I went to Sunnybank High. Education Queensland, however, didn't really want me to go to Sunnybank High because their argument was, well, you live closer to the newly opened Runcorn High School, so you should go to that one. You shouldn't be passing one high school to get to another. 
And the reason why I insisted on going to Sunnybank High was because they had a film and television program, whereas Runcorn High didn't, and I really wanted to do film and TV. It was in 2008 that uh, the old Runcorn train station was knocked down and this new one was built, or refurbished, so it didn't look anything like this when I was here. In 1886, a bone mill was established by Clazy, Main and Smith. Oddly, there was a bone works in Runcorn in England, and that was started in about 1840. Also in 1886, Smith's fertilizer factory opened, just east of Runcorn Station. A siding was built for it and was known as the Bone Mill Siding. An ongoing problem facing the farmers in the Runcorn and Fruit Grove areas in the 1880s was groups of armed men roaming the neighborhood intent on destroying the local native bird life. Apparently this was their Sunday pastime, go out there and shoot some birds. The farmers on the other hand were up in arms about this because the birds were the ones who were keeping the insect population down. It was in 1888 that pleasure seekers came down here to Runcorn from Brisbane to take a tour of the bone mill and also of the nursery. Fancy coming all this way just to look at a bone mill. Another truck, isn't it? It's another truck. Yeah. I think it's the same one. I think it just goes around the block multiple times to ruin my shots. And that's his friend, Jumble Jim. In 1889, a small halt was built here on the train line, round about here near the bone mill. It was called Tarragon. It was for passengers to get on and off the trains. It closed a year later due to very low patronage. It was in 1901 that the first school was opened, but this was a provisional school funded by the local farming communities. Today, Runcorn State School is now in Sunnybank. Even by 1922, there were only six houses between Warrigal Road and Nathan Road. It was in 1924 that the Runcorn Progress Association was founded and it was for men only. Two years later, they were able to get their own hall built. And this is it right here, still standing today. Here's a photo of what it looked like under construction. Today it's known as the Pinelands Lions Hall. It really cannot be underestimated just how important these early memorial halls were to the development of an area. The people running these would help to improve roads and get schools built and provide places for social gatherings and a place for agitation to lobby the government for improvements in their area. Fruit Grove train station opened in 1935. Fruit Grove, of course, is not a suburb. It's a locality within Runcorn. It was named after the Fruit Grove Estate, which opened in 1915. It was named after the many orchards in the area. However, the original idea was to call it Warrigal Station, after the nearby road. But there was already a Warrigal, west of Townsville. And then, of course, there's also Bone Mill Road and Nursery Road. Runcorn has preserved the old industries within its street names. Oddly, on the 1915 real estate plan, Warrigal Road is listed as Gatehouse Road, and they also misspelt local as L-O-A-L. -L. There's this very nice walkway here linking Bone Mill Road to Nathan Road. is a little tiny possum asleep in that tree over there. He's all tucked in. He's so smote. It was in 1941 that US forces took over the Runcorn warehouse. It's that whole area over there. Later the foundry was built uh, in and around the site. The site was used as a quartermaster's for storage. They also had a lumber yard there. And then it was in May 1945 that the RAAF took control of this facility. They then gave it to the Royal Australian Navy, but they were only there for about a year and they relinquished it in 1946. So I'm on Datura Street now. The All Hour Shopping Centre is behind me and Beanley Road is just there. In 1931, this was the site of a little airfield. And then during World War II, it became the site of an emergency landing field. Here's a map of it I found. 
quite an extensive area. So my old house was on the on the old airstrip. I'm just going past the Pine Lands uh, Lions Hall. I was here earlier talking about it, and the door is open. I wonder if I should go up and see if I can go inside and have a look. I've done this before. Like I've I've gone past somewhere and seen the door open to a place, and usually people are pretty good about it. As the old saying goes, it never hurts to ask. Well, it's definitely a hall. So I'm out the back of the hall. Nice boab tree up there. Yeah, one of our members cleaned that out of that one. This here, this this gap you can see here, this actually originally was the wall. This was the, the end of the hall and then later on, some years later, an extension was put on for the kitchen. Yeah, this was this was a stage right yeah, right about nice. here. Just right about here. Thanks very much for that, Hugh. Cheerio. That was so nice. Just knocked on the door and he said, "Yeah, come on in, come on in." And uh, uh, that was wonderful. Got some amazing information there, and just nice to have a chat with uh, with a local. All right, and on we go. Glasses. Well, this brings back memories. Runcorn Station's just across the road there. And I'd be walking along here in the afternoon, going home. And it really doesn't look all that different. Well, obviously, the, the station is different. That's uh, all been redone. But ahead of me, it's the same view. Maybe the trees are a little bit bigger, of course. In 1956, Bradkin Resources bought the site next to the sawmill. This is the Runcorn Foundry building that has dominated the Runcorn landscape for many decades. An interesting side note, this Australian company was begun as a result of two guys, Bradford and Kendall, betting on horse races in Sydney and winning five times in a row. They ended up winning £15,000 and they poured their winnings into the starting of the company. And it was in the 1960s that you really get urban development happening in a big way in this area and really across much of Brisbane, nice palm trees. And I know this place, this is the Runcorn All Hours Shopping Centre. This is where we used to, I used to live just around the corner there on Fica Street. But this is where we used to come to just for bread and milk and bits and pieces on a weekend that we didn't want to go all the way to the supermarket. Nappy's World, that used to be a video store. Or was it this one here? Either one of these ones here. This was a video store. But over here, that was the little little grocery store now it's a Indian grocery but it used to be like an IGA something like that I haven't walked here in three and a half decades and just up ahead of me is Fica Street and that's where we lived that's where we moved to from Sydney there's less trees and less plants out the front than what we had so that's it my old house. Fruit Grove train station is just behind me there and across the road where I am is this area of bushland. And some people think, oh, this is a, a last remnant bushland in this area, but nothing could be further from the truth. If you look on this 1946 aerial photograph, you will see that this bit of land here was almost completely treeless. This is all regrowth. And I can see one big spider and two big spiders. So I shall beat a hasty retreat. And now I'm on the corner of Beanley Road and Purse Road. And there used to be a house right here. I remember when we first moved here, there was a house on this site. The house is long gone. But they had a little, like a little lich gate or something just out the front. And there it is there. I don't know what it was. It might have been a water tank thing, you know, put a, put a water tank on it. Because these are concrete. So this is the last remnant of that house that was just on this side here. While I'm here walking along Beanley Road, there's the remains of a house, which is not an old one. Right across the road, it's wedged between Beanley Road, Bulimba Creek and the train line. So not, not a very well chosen site. Uh, it was only built in the late 80s, I think early 90s. And uh, it's been a ruin for a long time. In 1993, the Queensland State Archives opened. It was built on the site of an old quarry. Wow, look at that. 
the last farm in Runcorn. The progress isn't far away on the distance there you can see a big crane. I don't know what it's building but uh, it shows that there's a uh, development is never far away. I mean just looking here if I just stood here and not anything else, not all the traffic behind me, just looking that way you'd think you're in the middle of the countryside. So the entrance to Warrigal Farms is just there, literally a few meters to my left there, but there's this road here. It says there's a pony club up there somewhere. It must be a road you can drive on, a gazetted road. There's a park there, it's got a 20k speed limit. Just up ahead of me, I can see the old farmhouse. Wow, totally cool. Jeez, it's windy though. I've never seen that before. Isn't that exciting? So what of the future of Runcorn? Well, I do know that the old foundry site over there, the old engineering, is going to be repurposed and known as the foundry. It was bought, uh, the whole land was bought for $26 million by a Chinese-backed developer. As for the rest of Runcorn, I guess eventually all the little bits of greenery left will be filled in and pretty much all is now and will just be a, a sea of housing like everywhere else. But even today, just along here on Bone Mill Road, there's lots of nice old trees and creeks and things like that a little bit of wildlife still there i just saw the possum before yeah a possum wow we got we, we, we got a possum and there we have it my little history walk around runcorn what a fascinating place i think one of the main things i wanted to do with this video was to show you that you can take absolutely anywhere and with a little bit of research and getting out there and exploring you will find some amazing history that can be uncovered in your own neighborhood. People will say, oh, Runcorn, there's nothing there. Why would you do that? I think through the research I've done and exploring in person out here, I found so many little bits and pieces of the past that are still here to be found today that help to tell the story of this area. Totally worthwhile. I love making this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I'll see you again soon.